thank you um, for having me um, speak today. Um, so the topic I'm, I'm going to uh, present is on geometry of two non-degenerate hypersurface type Cauchy Riemann structures encoded in what we call dynamical Legendrian contact structures. And uh, what I present is joint work with Igor Zelenko. This is, um, as was noted in the email, third part of a three-part uh, lecture series following the previous two talks of, of, um, of Igor Zelenko on these um, rank two distributions. I want to note the topic for today is, is really quite different. It's, um, uh, in most aspects, it's, it's rather different. There's one significant commonality, which is uh, in both topics, the methods we're using to study these geometric structures involve translating the problem we're interested into into some problem um, involving geometry of submanifolds and Lagrangian Grassmannians. So for the rank two distribution, distributions, those um, submanifolds were the Jacobi curves. And for this topic, the, um, the submanifolds will actually be a pair of submanifolds whose Cartesian product gets naturally identified with a special integral submanifold in the CR manifold within the CR structure. So um, I'll, I'll get to, to that later in the talk. But for now, uh, I'll start. I want to start with um, just a, a very basic question. It's um, motivating the, the central topic, or, or the topics I'm, I'll be discussing all center around local equivalence problems for CR structures. And so we have this uh, basic question, which is what local invariants distinguish real hypersurfaces in complex vector spaces? Uh, a real hypersurface in a complex vector space is the prototypical CR manifold. And this type of question was the early impetus for what we now call CR geometry. In 1933, Carton answered this question comprehensively for the CR manifolds in the complex vector space C2, that is of two complex variables. This will be my notation. And um, specifically, Carton's solution is of this form where he solved the local equivalence problem for these hypersurfaces by um, uh, um, giving a, a canonical construction of a fiber bundle defined over the hypersurface of interest with a canonical co-frame. So this is what I'm referring to here as the canonical absolute parallelism. For these hypersurfaces in C2, um, Cartan's constructions more specifically yielded an eight-dimensional fiber bundle um, with a, um, so, so, so this, this was an early result. Um, at the time, they were interested in, in studying CR geometry um, in part for its relation to the then um, burgeoning field of complex analysis or function theory of multiple complex variables. And um, Carton cited as additional motivation a duality between the study of CR geometry for hypersurfaces in C2 and, uh, and differential equations, referencing um, then recent work by C. Gray on that duality. So those motivations that led to this study of three-dimensional CR manifolds, the hypersurfaces in C2, remain equally valid for the study of CR manifolds in higher dimensions, which led to this natural question of to what extent can we extend Cartan's solution to local equivalence problems for CR manifolds to um, CR manifolds in higher dimension. And indeed, there have been um, significant results in that direction. The first major generalizations of Cartan's solution arrived in the 60s and 70s due to um, Tanaka and independently Chern and Moser. Uh, they provided solutions to these local equivalence problems for the CR manifolds in arbitrary dimension um, belonging to the special class of structures that we call Levy, Levy non-degenerate. I'll explain more about what this means, Levy non-degeneracy. Uh, Tanaka's, Tanaka's approach is 
involves this algebraic method that I'll be referring to as the Tanaka prolongation. And Chern and Moser in their well-known paper on this uh, provided two separate approaches that solved the um, local equivalence problems. Chern's primary contribution is um, a version of Carton's method of equivalence, whereas Moser's primary contribution is, is his method of normal forms. And today, the study of non-degenerate, Levy non-degenerate CR geometry is well understood in the general framework of parabolic geometry. So the, these, um, these methods for um, solving local equivalence problems uh, work, I want to emphasize again, they work only for this class of Levy non-degenerate CR structures. But uh, they do work. Uh, they are viable for um, CR manifolds of arbitrary dimension. So Carton, um, Carton had, um, obtained this uh, parallelism for three-dimensional CR manifolds, and this generalization brings us to to a solution for arbitrary dimension. And one more classical result for Levy non-degenerate structures I want to mention is that we we also have um, uh, we, we also know exactly what the maximally symmetric uh, Levy non-degenerate uh, hypersurface type CR manifolds look like up to local equivalence. They're, they're described by a few models. So for a 2n plus 1 dimensional CR manifold, um, one example of a 2n plus 1 dimensional Levy non-degenerate hypersurface type CR manifold whose symmetry group is has maximum dimension is the sphere. So spheres in the complex space CN plus one um, in, have a have this type of CR structure, the Levy non-degenerate CR structure, and their symmetry group, um, or let's say the the structure's algebra of infinitesimal symmetries for these spheres is the Lie algebra of the special unitary group with indefinite signature uh, n plus one one and, um, and uh, there, there's actually a whole family of these maximally symmetric models they can be described by this as the locus of points um, in in projective the projectivization of cn plus two satisfying this equation so this this family of um, this family of, of examples is parameterized by the epsilon i coefficients here, where the epsilon i's can be plus or minus one. And uh, the, for each choice of these coefficients, we get another hypersurface whose um, algebra of infinitesimal symmetries is given again by this Lie algebra of the special unitary group with mixed signature. The signature for the algebra is p plus one and q plus one, where p and q uh, correspond to the or count the number of epsilon i's that are equal to positive one and negative one respectively. So these are th this is a family of examples of Levy non-degenerate um, CR structures whose symmetry groups have dimension attaining a known upper bound. And uh, these I, I wanted to begin with these classical results for Levy non-degenerate structures. Um, to motivate what I'll, I'll be speaking about next. Um, so, so we want to replicate these results if possible for Levy degenerate CR structures. That is obtaining canonical absolute parallelisms and um, ideally something analogous to understanding what the maximal, maximally symmetric models would be. This is among our goals. So, Regarding Levy non-degenerate, um, Levy degenerate structures, some progress has been made in that direction, but um, comparatively little, still comparatively little is known about them. Um, so I want to I want to remark that I, um, Le I while I've mentioned Levy non-degenerate structures and the um, Levy degenerate structures, there's um, CR structures in general are sorted into a, a finer hierarchy of non-degeneracies where on one extreme there's the Levy non-degenerate structures. The other extreme there's there are the totally we call totally degenerate structures. And between these extremes 
there's this hierarchy where levy non-degeneracy is sometimes referred to as one non-degeneracy and next there's two non-degeneracy and three non-degeneracy and so forth. We have K non-degeneracy for every non-positive or every positive integer K. So the next um, type of structures, the next class of structures in that hierarchy after the um, classically treated levy non-degenerate structures is two non-degenerate structures. And on this slide, I want to point out um, some, some previous results that are especially relevant for, for the present topic. Um, so namely, I'm going to point out three uh, previous constructions of absolute parallelisms for these two non-degenerate structures. Um, so recently there, there have been uh, absolute parallelisms constructed for five-dimensional CR manifolds. So Carton uh, treated the three-dimensional CR manifolds. Only recently we have a construction for five-dimensional CR manifolds, which, um, by the way, the, these hypersurface type CR manifolds appear only in odd dimensions. So after three, five is the next, next um, dimension where they appear. And uh, this is relevant for two non-degenerate structures because the structure, CR structures on five-dimensional manifolds can be either levy non-degenerate, totally degenerate, or two non-degenerate. And, and uh, that, that's all that appears there. But there is this two non-degeneracy. So the construction here uh, of parallelisms here does address those two non-degenerate structures. And uh, the Parallelisms were constructed in three separate papers independently recently. The authors are cited um, in the footnotes here. Um, also, moving beyond dimension five, recently Jan Grigorovich um, gave a uh, construction of these absolute parallelisms for a very special class of CR manifolds. Um, in, not an arbitrary dimension, but rather for it, it works for a class of CR manifolds whose dimension is one mod four. And furthermore, uh, they have, they satisfy this very special property that their leaf space, um, this, uh, an associated leaf space structure, which will happen to, I'll happen to speak about later, um, admits a Carton connection uh, modeled on a semi-simple leaf. So, so this, this um, absolute parallelism works for a very specific class of CR structures, but nevertheless, it's 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 um, 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 a fairly broad construction um, in in the sense that it's there are it, it applies to structures in in an infinite sequence of dimensions, and perhaps the most broad construction previously is is a construction of absolute parallelisms that work in arbitrary, arbitrary dimension. Um, but again, for a special class of these structures, and it's the class of CR structures that have a regular CR symbol. I'll be explaining what CR symbols are and what it means for them to be regular soon. And the, so this construction was obtained recently by uh, Curtis Porter and Igor Zelenko, who are both here today. Oh, and I see uh, Joel Merker is here today uh, as well, who um, is one of the authors for the, the these papers on the five-dimensional CR manifolds. So I just want to point out. Um, so this, this last one works for arbitrary dimension, but only applies to CR structures whose CR symbols are regular. And uh, there are many, there are many other two non-degenerate CR structures. Um, and then to, to treat local equivalence problems for these other CR structures, new methods are required. And that's the main topic of, of what I'll be speaking about today. I'm going to present a, one new method for uh, building absolute parallelisms on these untreated two non-degenerate CR structures. So let, let's set some working definitions. I'm going to always let M denote the CR manifold that we work with. And it will suffice to let M, in fact, be a real hypersurface in the uh, space CN plus one. So by real hypersurface, to clarify, I do mean um, a, an embedded submanifold of real dimension two N plus one in this case. So we'll let D denote the maximal complex subbundle um, within the 
tangent bundle of this hypersurface. So um, here explicitly that can be described as the tangent bundle intersected with this other bundle obtained by taking all of our tangent vectors and multiplying by i. That multiplication is like the um, complex structure on the ambient vector space. By construction, this distribution D is invariant under multiplication by I, so we can let J denote this um, operator given as multiplication by I. J is like an almost complex structure in that its square is minus one and it is fiber-wise linear. So we can, we can look for the eigenspaces of J. And in particular, I want to label the I eigenspaces of J with, as capital H. These I eigenspaces don't lie in the real span of the distribution D, but rather lie in the, um, can be found once we complexify everything. So if we tensor the tangent bundle with C, then within this uh, complexified bundle, we can find the subspaces that are I eigenspaces of J, and we label them as H. So H is a complex distribution over the manifold M. We call H a CR structure or Cauchy Riemann structure on M. So this will be, um, you can take this as a working de definition for today of a CR manifold of hypersurface type. And uh, if I'll, I'll point out that this definition is extrinsic, it re relies on the way that, that our CR, CR manifold is embedded in, in, in ambient space. Um, any CR structure H turn, uh, obtained through this extrinsic um, definition um, satisfies some properties. Um, specifically, I'll note the three properties on this slide. Um, if it's a structure obtained that way, we'll always have complex rank N. Uh, this is corresponding to our submanifold being a hypersurface. And the uh, structure H will be integrable. And the third property we call being totally real. So it means that the intersection of H with its complex conjugate, which I, I denote using this overline bar notation, should be trivial. Um, so conversely, any distribution H on a, um, in the complexified tangent bundle of the manifold M satisfying these three properties um, defines a CR structure in the sense that um, at least the real analytic category, if you have such a distribution, then you can embed the manifold M into a complex space in such a way that this distribution coincides with the extrinsically defined CR distribution obtained from that embedding. So this could alternatively be taken as a working definition of our CR structure. Um, in any case, these properties will be helpful for us later. So, these are CR structures. Every CR structure has um, a basic local invariant called the Levy form. It's a field of Hermitian forms defined on fibers of the distribution H given by the formula here, where I'll explain some notation. This capital gamma denotes sec, I'll use to denote sections of a fiber bundle. So here X and Y are vector fields taking values in the distribution H. Um, their values at a point P are denoted with the subscript uh, P. And so this is the Levy form applied to the ordered pair X, P, and Y, P. It's defined as the uh, leap bracket of vector fields X and Y bar, where again, the overline bar denotes complex conjugation. And that vector field's value at P represents a, a and with this coefficient, so multiplied by I. This vector field's value at P with that coefficient uh, represents an element in the coset space here where we quotient out by h plus h bar. And uh, so the Levy form takes the ordered pair x, p, and y, p, and the, it gives us an element in this one-dimensional complex vector space. Um, I'll, I'll note that, of, of course, if we change x and y um, near p, but keep the value fixed at p, then the value of this lead derivative here, or the lead bracket, will change, but the difference is subsumed by the coset that we quotient out by. So this is this is really a well-defined form. And we let K, I'm going to let K denote the, the kernel of this form. We call it the Levy kernel. Now, now that I've introduced the Levy form, I can 
I can uh, define that term levy non-degeneracy that I've used many times already. So levy non-degeneracy means simply that the levy form is non-degenerate. In other words, K for a levy non-degenerate structure is trivial or equal to zero. So our main topic today is going to be two non-degenerate structures. And I want to define that now. Um, I, I'll mention before doing so, uh, I'm going to assume throughout, throughout the talk today that we work with structures whose levy kernel has constant rank. So K is, is actually a distribution. It's fibers of the same dimension at every point. And um, with, with that assumption, we can define two non-degeneracy of a CR structure um, using these add V operators that I introduced on this slide. So for a vector in the Levy kernel, add V is going to denote an operator that sends the quotient space H mod K to itself. And it's defined by taking any vector field belonging to the Levy kernel whose value at, at, at the point V is equal to this vector we chose in the Levy kernel. And then add V is defined by applying add V to a coset of a, a vector um, by taking this Lie bracket. And um, so formally, the, the Lie derivative or Lie bracket here um, belongs to, to the space H plus H bar. And when we mod out by K plus H bar, we ob obtain um, something that is it can be naturally identified with an element in H mod K. So the big picture for, for this, um, this object is, is that to each vector in the Levy kernel, we have an associated add V operator. Um, that is, is a map from H mod K to itself. And as I mentioned, levy non-degeneracy corresponds to k equaling zero. We also call that one non-degeneracy in the terminology of that hierarchy of non-degeneracies I referred to earlier. Two non-degeneracy is can be described as as having um, a non-trivial kernel, and furthermore, requiring this sort of non-degeneracy condition that. Um, the add V operator to associated to each non-zero vector in the kernel is itself non-zero. So this is uh, the property of two non-degeneracy. All right, so um, I want to uh, begin working toward describing the CR symbols that I referred to earlier, which are again, another, another local invariant of CR structures. And for this, um, uh, let, I want to consider the filtration inside of the complexified tangent bundle where we, we have the whole complexified tangent bundle within that is H plus H bar, and within that is K plus K bar. And uh, we can start labeling, I want to start labeling the, uh, the graded components associated with that filtration. And the reason for these weights, the way they're labeled, is that um, eventually we'll identify these vector spaces with um, with uh, graded components of or subspaces in a graded Lie algebra. And the weights are going to be compatible with brackets in the Lie algebra. So this G minus two component is going to be the whole complexified tangent bundle modulo H plus H bar. And um, the, uh, we label with a pair of weights, G minus one, one, as this quotient space H mod K, and the pair of weights minus one, minus one, the quotient space H bar mod K bar. And uh, also, um, I, I'll, I'll use the pair of weights G minus two, zero to label the minus two component as well. We'll switch between using um, the pair of weights notation and the single weight notation at, at times. Um, regarding the these two spaces whose pair of weights start with minus one, uh, we'll label their direct sum as G minus one. And the direct sum of all of these spaces uh, we label as G minus, this large vector space G minus admits the structure of a Heisenberg algebra or has the structure of a Heisenberg algebra induced by the Levy form via the formula here. So this is the way the Heisenberg algebra structure equations can be defined in terms of the 
levy form that we saw earlier. Um, I'll note for, for non-degenerate structures, everything described so far still works. Um, notice that the levy kernel is trivial. So, so these quotient spaces H mod K and H bar mod K bar um, are equivalent to H and H bar themselves. Um, the Heisenberg algebra um, is, is well-defined still for levy non-degenerate structures and it actually functions as the Tanaka symbol um, in the application of Tanaka prolongation to levy non-degenerate CR structures that I referred to earlier. Um, but with two non-degenerate CR structures, they're no longer naturally amenable to Tanaka prolongation because we've quotiented out by this K and K bar while constructing this so-called symbol. And for standard Tanaka theory, uh, we, we need our symbol to have the same dimension as the underlying manifold. In, two non -degenerate, in this two non-degenerate setting, this um, negatively graded the algebra is has has smaller dimension. So we quotient out by k and k bar, in effect losing some information about the underlying CR structure when we um, build our symbol. But um, this information can be recovered, namely, um, so I'm speaking informally when I say that, but uh, what we quotient out by this k and k bar can be encoded in the derivations of this Heisenberg algebra in a natural way. So I'll discuss this um, for a vector um, in the Levy kernel. We have the add V map that I introduced earlier, and we have a, a kind of, it's sort of like an extension of the add V um, operator, this tilde and, and it, um, this, uh, this object that we construct belongs to the derivations of the Heisenberg algebra. So this add V tilde is defined um, on the, it's a, it's a map defined on, um, uh, it's an endomorphism of G minus one. And uh, when we apply it to a vector belonging to the component G minus one, one, that is H mod K, uh, the map will be zero. And when we apply it, to a vector in, in G minus one minus one, that is H bar mod K bar. It's defined through the ad, in terms of add V by applying add V to the complex conjugate of that vector. And so this turns out to naturally belong to the conformal symplectically algebra of the minus one component of the Heisenberg algebra where this conformal symplectic structure comes from the um, structure equations on the Heisenberg algebra which is also equivalent to the degree zero derivations of the Heisenberg algebra. So I'm going to all, all the time use this notation derivations, DER for derivations of the Heisenberg algebra, but more specifically uh, degree zero derivations. And so the whole collection of these add V tilde operators, the specific subspace of the derivations of the Heisenberg algebra, I'm going to label as G02. And um, the, um, we, we label G0 minus two as the complex conjugate of G0 two. Now, um, perhaps conjugation here is a little bit ambiguous, but um, it's induced by, in a natural way, by conjugation on the Heisenberg algebra. So, so um, G0 two, I want to note, is also a local invariant of the, uh, of the, CR structure from which this whole object was constructed. In other words, this collection of add V operators is a local invariant. And uh, at this point, the two local invariants, the Levy form and this collection of add V operators, um, we can organize into a, a, a nice vector space structure that, that uh, we call the CR symbol. So this was introduced previously by um, Porter and Zelenko in their recent paper. And it's a basic local invariant of the CR structure equivalent to that pair of objects I just mentioned, the Levy form, together with the collection of ADV operators. 
And um, the definition is this vector space with some additional structure we label as G with a superscript zero, alluding to the uh, standard notation in Tanaka theory. And uh, the, the vector space consists of these components, G minus, G zero, zero, G or G minus, which is the Heisenberg algebra we already saw. There's the zero two and zero minus two component, which um, we defined on the previous slide. And lastly, there's this, this extra component G zero zero, which is defined to be the, the maximum maximal collection of derivations whose adjoint action on these other uh, bigraded components uh, leaves those components invariant. And uh, th there's also in the background something that I'm, I'm not going to emphasize much in this, in this talk, an involution naturally defined, an antilinear involution naturally defined on this whole vector space. So the CR symbol is, is a basic local invariant of the uh, CR structure that we began with. We'll say that it's a CR. It, we'll say that it's regular if it if it's a least sub algebra of this um, this algebra that it naturally um, naturally belongs to, which is the semi-direct product of the Heisenberg algebra with its derivations. And so these regular symbols are the um, are the I'll remind you are the structures that were treated previously or for which local equivalence problems were solved previously by this, this paper uh, by Porter and Zelenko. And I want to summarize the results because next um, I'll, I'll be presenting analogous results for non-regular CR symbols. So um, in, in their, their recent paper, they, they've constructed absolute or canonical absolute parallelisms for um, CR structures of hypersurface type in arbitrary dimension or I should say two non-degenerate CR structures, an arbitrary dimension um, that have a exhibit a constant regular CR symbol. So the, the, the key method that they, they use for this is a, they developed a kind of bigraded analog of Tanaka prolongation, which led to the construction of this absolute parallelism. And uh, the, the, the dimension of the bundle on which this parallelism is defined can be um, calculated purely algebraically in terms of the CR symbol, the structure CR symbol. Um, so also um, they, they show that there can be, th that there is a unique uh, CR structure with a given CR symbol um, whose symmetry group attains the upper bound for the, um, for the dimension of, of such a symmetry group. This upper bound is, is, is actually the dimension of the bundle on which this parallelism is constructed. And um, furthermore, if the rank of the Levy kernel is equal to one, and we work again with a dimension two n plus one manifold, um, they obtain upper bounds for the um, algebra dimension of the algebra of infinitesimal symmetries of one of these CR structures. And uh, in fact, it's the sharp upper bound they even find um, an explicit, found a, an, an explicit hypersurface realization of a CR manifold, that one of these CR manifolds attaining whose symmetry algebra attains this upper bound. And um, so these are all results for two non-degenerate CR structures whose um, whose CR symbols are regular. And uh, what what I what um, it, what I want to describe today is is going to address um, a broad class of CR structures that are whose symbols are not regular. And so um, on this slide, I want to highlight a few of the main results that I'll be describing further. And then by the end of the presentation, I'll arrive at, um, at applications of, of these results. So the results on this slide, I regard sort of as an underlying theory. And then later on, I'll arrive at applications of, of this theory. So first, um, um, 
we, we have obtained a construction of absolute parallelisms for a broad class of these two non-degenerate CR structures that we label as recoverable. I'll explain more about what recoverable means. The method that we use um, involves fundamentally um, correspondence between the CR structures and a special flag structure on the associated levy leaf spaces. This is this flag structure is what I refer to in the title as a dynamical Lachandrian contact structure. And um, so, so I'll be explaining this construction soon. Um, the construction leads to a large bundle with a canonical co-frame, or in other words, absolute parallelism. And uh, the in 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 general, um, the bundle is constructed to be as small as possible, but it treats a many CR, this construction treats many structures simultaneously. For some CR structures, one can build a parallelism on a smaller bundle, and for certain applications, it's ideal to do so. So um, there's a reduction, a, a reduction procedure that we can apply, um, taking the large parallelism and somehow reducing the bundle to obtain a parallelism on a lower dimensional bundle. And from this reduction procedure that I'll describe soon, uh, we obtain something that's very important for, for us at this time called a reduced modified CR symbol. So this, I've highlighted it just, um, just to emphasize that, that this is um, an object that we've introduced of special importance um, that I'll, I'll, I'll describe more later. But um, the what I'll say now is that reduced modified CR symbols are similar to CR symbols in that they encode local invariants of, of CR structures, but uh, more, more data is encoded in the reduced modified symbols. So also a notable result is, is that I'll, I'll discuss is that the, um, if the dimension of our manifold is sufficiently large relative to the rank of the Levy kernel, uh, we've shown that generic CR symbols cannot be exhibited on homogeneous models sort of curious pheno phenomenon um, because uh, any CR symbol can appear on, on a CR structure, but uh, for most CR symbols, they can't appear on homogeneous CR manifolds. And then uh, so also similar to the previously mentioned result for non-structures with non-regular symbols. Uh, we can show that there exists unique uh, up to local equivalence, unique maximum symmetric structures that um, have a given constant reduced modified symbol. Okay, so these are these are sort of the fundamental results that I want to explain in more detail today. Um, so, and, and I'll begin with the construction of the canonical absolute parallelisms, which is really the most fundamental among among all of these results. And this, this construction, as I've said, centers around this flag structure on the levy leaf space. So I'm going to start there describing the, the, the leaf space structure. And to simplify things, we'll complexify the manifold. I believe that this, this can all be done without complexification, but doing so makes things easier for us. So um, working locally with some coordinate patch of real coordinates uh, we simply replace the real co real variables with complex coordinates. And this is uh, so doubling the real dimension of our space. Um, I'm going to label this as CM for the complexified manifold. And at least in the real, if we're working in the real analytic category, the um, CR structure H and the Levy kernel can all be extended to the complexified man manifold in a natural way. Um, the distribution K and its complex conjugate K bar are both in integrable. That is, even the extended versions are integrable, as is their direct sum. So the direct sum of K plus K bar uh, foliates the, the complexified manifold, and we call this foliation the Levy foliation. So um, we'll define the leaf space of, of this foliation to be the Levy leaf space, or that's the, the name that we give it. Uh, this is the space of 
consisting of maximal integral submanifolds of k plus k bar, at least working in some local neighborhood. And I'm going to let pi denote the uh, natural quotient map from the complexified manifold down to the leaf space. Uh, if we take the distribution h plus h bar and then consider the push forward under this projection pi, uh, we get some distribution that will be like la I'll label with this calligraphic D. It's a distribution on the leaf space that turns out to be a contact structure on the leaf space. And uh, so at this point, uh, the, the Lagrangian Grassmannians that I referred to at the outset enter the picture. Uh, we have a contact structure on the leaf space. Its fibers uh, accordingly have some, some uh, uh, conformal symplectic structure on which we can model the Lagrangian Grassmannians. And I'm going to let LG apply to a fiber of this distribution at a point gamma to note the Lagrangian Grassmannian uh, modeled on that fiber. OK, so the CR structure um, it can um, more information of the CR structure can be encoded in these Lagrangian Grassmannians, which is what I want to describe on this slide. And we, um, for this, let's consider these two maps, J plus and J minus. Um, and so J plus is, is a map from the CR manifold into the Lagrangian Grassmannian bundle uh, defined by uh, when we apply J plus to a point P, uh, it's defined as the, the image of the fiber of H at P under the push forward of the, this quotient map pi. Now, uh, when we project the fiber of H at P down to the levy leaf space, we get some subspace in the contact distribution. And that subspace turns out to be Lagrangian. So indeed, um, this whole subspace can be regarded as a single point in the Lagrangian Grassmannian. Similarly, J minus is defined as the um, projection of H bar into um, the Lagrangian Grassmannian. And I want to know this property that uh, for any point P, when we apply J plus and J minus, we get two subspaces in the, uh, in the contact structure that are actually transversal. So um, J plus and J minus at every point P define a split, defines a splitting of the contact structure. And there's, um, there's a concept of Legendrian contact structures, which a Legendrian contact structure is is a contact a contact structure to begin with, with and added to that there's a, a field of splittings of every fiber of the contact structure into um, uh, into Lagrangian subspaces. This is what a Legendrian contact structure is. And the object we've obtained here is similar to that, except that um, we have a bundle. Uh, a bundle of, of, or we have two fiber bundles that um, I'm denoting by J plus and J minus now. It's some abusive notation for convenience. We'll let J plus and J minus denote the image of these respective maps, J plus and J minus. So going forward, these will, this notation will simply denote the image of those maps. And uh, the, these two images define fiber bundles over the leaf space whose fibers are themselves submanifolds in the Lagrangian Grassmannian. So rather than having uh, at, a, at a point on the leaf space a fixed splitting of the Lagrangian Grassmannian, which would correspond to the image of J plus and J minus at a single point P, we have a whole collection of splittings parameterized by um, some submanifold of the original CR manifold. So th this is uh, where the term dynamical Legendrian contact structure comes from. Instead of having a fixed a field of splittings uh, of the, the contact structure, we have a sh an object where its fibers at every point consists of um, a, a whole family of splittings. And so I have this diagram that, that summarizes the objects I've introduced so far. Um, to begin with, we have the complexified CR manifold. 
and um, it's foliated by integral submanifolds of k plus k bar. And the projection pi brings us down to the Levy leaf space um, to above a point gamma in the Levy leaf space, we have the Lagrangian Grassmannian modeled on the fiber of the contact distribution there. And uh, within that Lagrangian Grassmannian, we have two submanifolds, J plus and J minus, or rather the fibers of J plus and J minus at the point gamma. And uh, to, if, if we consider a leaf of, of the Levy foliation and fix a point such as this uh, point marked with the black dot here, then uh, we, can, we can apply J plus and J minus to that. And um, each of those maps will give us a different point in the Lagrangian Grassmannian. And uh, furthermore, when we apply uh, J plus to all of the points in this leaf, then it's going to give us all of the, its image will, will cover all of the points in this, um, uh, sub, this fiber of J plus over the point gamma. Similarly, the same thing is true for um, uh, J minus. But actually, um, it, since um, H is integrable, which means that K, the bracket of K with H bar belongs to H, um, the, the, the image of H bar under projection down to the contact structure doesn't move along uh, integral curves of the, of the distribution K bar. What that means for us is that if we consider if we apply J, if we project H bar, let's say, um, along an integral submanifold of, of K bar, such as this thick blue line, which is my heuristic way of describing a submanifold of K bar in this diagram, um, the image will be a single point along this blue line. On the other hand, if we project, consider the image of H bar projected at each point along a submanifold of K, such as this thick red line, then the images of H bar will actually turn out to um, cover the entire submanifold J minus. And that's true for any sub, any of these integral submanifolds of K. When we project H bar along any of them, we get the entire entirety of this fiber of J minus. And so our structure, our dynamical Legendrian contact structure is, is a, a fiber bundle over um, the contact space whose fibers consist of pairs of submanifolds in the Lagrangian Grassmannian and Lagrangian Grassmannian bundle. And it's um, related to the original CR manifold in the sense that um, a leaf of the Levy foliation can be described as the Cartesian product of these two submanifolds that we have in the Lagrangian Grassmannian. So every point here corresponds to a pair of points on a unique pair of points on the um, Lagrangian, the, the pair of manifolds in the Lagrangian Grassmannian. So these are these are the objects that we're working with. The reason that we introduce this um, these these new objects instead of studying the CR manifold directly is that these uh, dynamical Legendrian contact structures are naturally amenable to an application of Tanaka theory, whereas um, there's no straightforward application of Tanaka theory to the two non-degenerate CR structures themselves, at least directly. Um, so, um, the, uh, right, the, I, I wanted to say, um, at this point, I've described how we take our CR structure and obtain a dynamical Legendrian contact structure, but um, uh, the, it's, it's a fair question if we can go in the other direction. So as I just mentioned, um, we, the reason we, we consider this correspondence between the different structures is that we can apply to Naka theory to study the dynamical Legendrian contact structures build the local, uh, build canonical absolute parallelisms for them, and then potentially translate the, um, this construction back to the setting of CR geometry. Translating it back, however, is not always possible. And uh, so that 
the question, the, the fun, the essential question to be asked is, is under what circumstances can we recover the original CR structure from its associated dynamical Lachandrian contact structure? Okay, and so that's, um, that's where the, the term recoverable that I used earlier comes from. And so I want to briefly discuss the conditions under which we can recover a CR structure from its associated DLC structure. And uh, this, this recoverability is exactly the property of, of having the CR structure H be the unique involutive distribution within, uh, within the span of H and K bar. That is both rank N and transversal to K bar and contains the distribution K. All right, so this is this is the criterion for recoverability. It has it has a nice reformulation in terms of prolongations of spaces of homomorphisms um, that I'll describe here. So if we let Z denote a home, homomorph a subspace of homomorphisms from a vector space V to a vector space W, and define this associated anti-symmetrization operator del by this um, formula here we define the first prolongation of the subspace Z to be the kernel of this anti-symmetrization operator. And accordingly, every two non-degenerate hypersurface type CR structure is recoverable if and only if the collection of ad V operators that I described earlier, where V belongs to the Levy kernel, so that collection I've denoted here by ad K, has a vanishing first prolongation. So if the first prolongation of this collection of ADV operators vanishes, then the CR structure is recoverable and, and, the, um, and vice versa. In terms of rank uh, structures whose Levy kernel is rank one, this has um, a very uh, convenient reformulation, which is that um, uh, the CR structure is recoverable if and only if it, any of the these non-zero ad v operators have rank greater than one, right? And I want to I want to um, give a sort of heuristic picture of the um, moduli space of CR symbols and um, give some idea of which CR symbols are recover how many are recoverable and also how many are regular versus non-regular. For this, I'll, I'll note um, every CR symbol is encoded as we've already seen by a levy form together with this collection of ADV operators. Also, the CR symbols are encoded or uniquely determined by uh, the, what we call the reduced levy form, where the levy form is a Hermitian form defined on, on the space H. The reduced levy form is the associated non-degenerate Hermitian form defined on H mod K. And uh, so, so this reduced levy form L is a non-degenerate Hermitian form. The vector ad V vector spaces um, turn out to be um, L self-adjoint anti-linear operators referring to this, this Hermitian form L. And uh, I'm, I'm putting this node on this slide uh, because I, I, um, I, I wanted, want to remark uh, that, that for the case where the Levy kernel as rank one, we've um, classified these pairs of objects, just out the, the algebraic objects of a, a Hermitian form and then L self L and then L self adjoint anti linear operator. And owing to that classification, we have a, a, a comprehensive understanding of which CR symbols um, corresponding to the case where the kernel is rank one which CR symbols are recoverable and which CR symbols are regular. And in the moduli space of CR symbols corresponding to the rank of K equal to one in any parameter setting with dimension, um, CR dimension N greater than two and fixed Levy signature. In this moduli space of all uh, corresponding CR symbols, which indeed has moduli, so it's like, uh, um, it's not discrete. Um, there are, there are at most two CR symbols that are non-recoverable. Everything else is recoverable and therefore the, the method I'm introducing today can be applied to all of these other structures. 
And there are finitely many CR symbols in this moduli space that are regular. Um, everything else is non-regular and therefore of the type of CR structure that we still want a method to treat. So what I present today is going to be applicable to every the, the, the vast um, gray area in this moduli space, which is which represents both the symbols that we um, want to treat and now have a method to treat. I'll mention also, it's not labeled in this diagram, but the, the two, the at most two non-recoverable symbols um, turn out to be regular. So the, the methods of Porter and Zelenko for treating regular CR symbol address everything um, that is, that is non-recoverable in, um, in the case of where the Levy kernel has rank equal to one. So, um, the um, so 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 now I, uh, I'll introduce really get into the details of of our um, of of our absolute parallelism construction, and um, for this I want to begin by fixing some model Heis model CR symbol. So it has this model Heisenberg algebra and the um, subspace of its derivation split into this grading. Some, as we saw earlier for CR symbols. So we have some abstract CR symbol that, that we fixed from the outset. And um, this, there's a frame bundle P0 that has turned out to be a, a very incisive tool for studying these CR structures. This frame bundle P0 is defined as the collection of uh, linear maps from the model Heisenberg algebra to the Heisenberg algebras at, at each point on the CR manifold with the requirement that they are Lie algebra isomorphisms, so compatible with the Lie brackets of these Heisenberg algebras. Also, they need to preserve the bigraded components. So I've said we fix a model Heisenberg algebra. Also, suppose that we've fixed um, a decomposition into the three com bigraded components, as, as I showed earlier for the Heisenberg algebras. So these, these frames need to preserve the bigraded components of the Heisenberg algebras. And the last condition for these frames is that they uh, need to, when we conjugate the, the zero two component of the Heisenberg algebra at a point, or sorry, of the CR symbol at a point, or the zero minus two component, when we conjugate it by a frame, we need to obtain the zero two or zero minus two component of the model CR symbol. So this large collection of frames defines a fiber bundle over the complexified manifold and it also defines, of course, a fiber bundle over the contact structure um, when we just just complete this commutative diagram. Uh, as, as a bundle over the complexified manifold, it's even a principal bundle. But uh, as I mentioned a few times already, it, it's not amenable to Tanaka prolongation. But whereas when we regard this as a bundle over the contact, contact manifold, the Levy leaf space, uh, then this P0 can play the role of the uh, degree zero geometric prolongation that appears in, in Tanaka theory. Um, so, so we have this large frame bundle. And next I want to introduce a kind of soldering form. And as I mentioned, P0 regarded as a bundle over the, um, over the Levy leaf space is not a principal bundle. But um, this soldering form, it, it's similar to a principal bundle. And this soldering form is going to similarly be analogous to the principal connections that one has from a principal bundle. So on this slide, I want to define the map theta 0 here. To define it, we take, um, we take any point in the frame bundle and consider a curve within the frame bundle that specifically belongs to a fiber the fiber above the, the, fi the fiber, um, the same fiber, vertical fiber containing that, that point. So fi same fiber of this frame bundle. And um, um, so the curve that we're choosing will be, let's suppose it's parameterized such that at time zero, it passes through the point that we fixed and uh, its derivative at zero is going to represent, therefore, a, a, um, a tangent vector in the 
a vertical tangent vector of the of the frame bundle at this point. And uh, theta zero is going to map the vertical tangent space at this point to the um, the conformal symplectic Lie algebra. Um, um, here I've written conformal symplectic Lie algebra of the fiber of the contact distribution. Um, note that this fiber of the contact distribution is also the G minus one component of the Heisenberg algebra um, at the point above um, the, the image of psi zero under this projection pi. So theta, oh, sorry, uh, theta zero applied to this tangent vector, the derivative of our curve at zero will be defined as the pre-image of, of the frame psi zero or inverse image of the frame psi zero composed with, um, with the, the, the map given as this derivative. So the derivative defines an endomorphism from the model vector space to the, um, to the Heisenberg algebra um, at, a, at a point. And um, sorry, I said endomorphism. I, I just mean lin not endomorphism, linear map from the mod model Heisenberg algebra to the Heisenberg algebra at a point. And then when we apply the inverse of psi zero, it brings us back to the model Heisenberg algebra. And this whole composition is an automorphism of the model Heisenberg algebra that turns out to belong to the conformal symplectic Lie algebra here. And uh, so, so now I can introduce, a, 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 it, it's not exactly a local invariant of the CR structure, but it's, it's a kind of relative invariant. And uh, we call it the modified CR symbol. And I'm denoting it by, similar to the CR symbol, G with a superscript zero, but I also write mod for modified. The modified CR symbol is the Heisenberg algebra at a point together with um, the, the, um, the image of this map theta. Notice that the, these modified symbols depend on points in the frame bundle. So it's the image of the map theta applied to the vertical tangent bundle at a point on this large frame bundle, P0. So the objects I've introduced are this large frame bundle P0 and now the modified CR symbol, which is defined as using the image of this sort of soldering form theta zero. And uh, this, this modified symbol, to this modified symbol, we can, we can apply the algebraic construction of Tanaka prolongation. Um, and so referring to Dennis Thies, earlier talks, uh, he introduced two types of Tanaka prolongation, one he referred to as intrinsic and one as extrinsic. Uh, for us, the prolongation of this G0 mod symbol uh, has to be defined using the extrinsic definition because it's not always a Lie algebra. So the intrinsic definition is not viable, but the extrinsic definition works perfectly fine. And um, a technical detail I want to note is that we'll say that a point in the frame bundle is regular with respect to Tanaka prolongation. If all of these uh, maps um, from, um, from points in the neighborhood of, of our fixed point to their, uh, the dimension of the kth Tanaka prolongation of their modified symbol, which I'm denoting with this subscript K. So G K mod is the kth prolongation, the, the degree K component of the Tanaka prolongation. Um, if all of these maps to the, uh, are, are constant in the neighborhood of, um, of, of our point psi zero. So in other words, the, the Tanaka prolongation consisting of several vector spaces with different weights, to these degree K um, weights, um, the dimension of all of those spaces needs to be constant in the neighborhood. If that happens, and we'll say that our point in the frame bundle is regular, right? So this is, this is a technical detail that allows me now to state um, really are, are the, the main theorem that I, I want to introduce today. So if we have a, a fixed CR symbol and um, G0, and then a corresponding modified CR symbol, 
obtained as I just described will let uh, U applied to that modified CR symbol denote the um, universal Tanaka prolongation of the modified CR symbol. And uh, if we have a two non-degenerate hypersurface type CR structure whose CR symbol um, with, with that given CR symbol G0 and also with a regular point psi zero in the frame bundle P zero that we've constructed. Um, and furthermore, uh, we let G zero mod denote the, the modified symbol at that point psi zero. Then we, we have a construction of a canonical absolute parallelism on a bundle whose base space is a neighborhood in the frame bundle P zero a neighborhood of the point psi zero in the frame bundle P zero. The dimension of this parallelism or the, the bundle in which we have the parallelism built is equal to the dimension of the universal Tanaka prolongation. So that can be calculated purely algebraically once you have the modified symbol. And um, this is a kind of microlocal version of of Tanaka prolongation in the sense that the bundle can only be built over a neighborhood of a point inside of this frame bundle P0 rather than a neighborhood of the uh, base manifold, a point on the base manifold. Now, the um, dimension of the algebra of infinitesimal symmetries of a two non degenerate hypersurface type CR structure of the type in this uh, previous bullet point. Will, will not exceed the um, dimension of the universal Tanaka prolongation. So already we have an upper bound um, on the algebra of infinitesimal symmetries coming from this parallelism in the standard way. And um, a third point, um, oh, sorry, this is, so th this is, this is all, I, 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 on a previous version of my slides, I had a third point, but I'm, I'm, this is all that I'm presenting for, for, for now on this demo. Okay, so, but the main thing here is that we have our absolute parallelism associated with a given uh, modified symbol. So a construction of an absolute parallelism um, for structures with a given uh, modified symbol at a point. And, um, from this large construction, so we have a large frame bundle that, that is built out of this construction with a canonical co-frame. Um, we can, we can uh, at each point, um, um, or we can um, apply a sort of reduction procedure that, that um, lets us um, obtain a different uh, parallelism on a smaller bundle. That's, that's what I wanted to say. So um, to each point on the, the bundle P0, we have, a, um, we have a reduced modified G0, reduced modified symbol G0 mod. And we can consider, so we can consider a map from P0 to the image of the um, reduced modified symbol at that point. And we can fix some model reduced modified symbol and consider the collection of all points in the uh, space P0 whose corresponding reduced modified symbol matches that fixed modified symbol. So it's like taking a level set of the mapping from the frame bundle to the space of uh, modified symbols. And we'll denote this level set using this notation P0 applied to the fixed modified symbol. And uh, suppose that if we take one of these level sets, we get a subspace or sub bundle within the large bundle P0 that projects surjectively down to the complexified manifold. So it covers the, um, the complexified CR manifold. Then uh, to the submanifold within the, the bundle P0, we can again apply uh, theta zero to the, um, to the vertical tangent spaces of this sub bundle. And it's going to give us not the whole um, reduced modified symbol because we're now working with, instead of applying theta zero to the whole vertical fiber of P0, we're applying it to a smaller subspace. 
when we apply theta zero, we'll therefore get a subspace within its image, uh, the larger image. So a subspace within the modified symbol that we call a reduced modified symbol. And this process can be iterated. And in some cases, uh, eventually we, um, uh, we reach, um, or in all cases, this process can be, be iterated until you arrive at a reduction. So a subbundle of P0 for which there are no non-trivial level sets that surjectively project, project down to the complexified manifold. And uh, uh, through that process, you get to a point where you have the reduced, um, reduced bundle that we'll label as P0 reduced. And it has the corresponding reduced modified symbol, um, G0 reduced, again, obtained by applying the, the soldering form theta zero to the vertical fibers of, of uh, the reduced, the, the reduction P0 reduced. And um, so from these reduced modified symbols, there's a property we can show that, that if you have a, a reduction one of these sub bundles P0 reduced within the large frame bundle P0. And it's the, the mapping sending a point in that reduction uh, to the associated reduced modified symbol. If that mapping is constant, then it turns out that this constant reduced modified symbol has to be a least subalgebra of this algebra in which it naturally uh, lives. And this turns out to be a strong constraint on local invariance of homogeneous models because the um, every homogeneous model admits that the associated bundle P0 admits a reduction um, for which the uh, it, for which its reduced modified symbols are constant. And the local invariance of homogeneous models are encoded in those um, reduced modified symbols, or I should say some local invariants are encoded in those reduced modified symbols. So the, the algebraic property that, that the reduced modified symbols are themselves the algebras places a, a constraint on, on local invariance of homogeneous models. And um, so fr from this, we're able to show the um, previously mentioned generic non-existence of homogeneous models result. And so Suppose that we have fixed our levy, the rank of our levy kernel to be anything greater than one, and now consider the set of all CR symbols associated with two non-degenerate hypersurface type CR structures whose levy kernel equals that rank. And furthermore, suppose that their dimension is sufficiently large, specifically large than four times the rank of the levy kernel plus one. Um, so among all such CR symbols, the um, a generic symbol cannot be found on a homogeneous model. So that's the result here. Now, for the case where the Levy kernel has rank equal to one, we have the same result um, in this special, with this additional special constraint that the Levy form is sign definite, which corresponds to pseudo convex CR structures. If, it, um, if the Levy form is signed indefinite, um, I, I suspect that the same result is true, but it requires more subtle analysis than we've done so far. Um, for the, the general statement for the rank k equal to one case in low dimensions holds um, specifically dimension seven and nine, um, a generic CR symbol um, will not be associated with homogeneous models, but in higher dimensions, it's still an open problem for its sign indefinite levy forms. Um, so, so for a generic CR symbol, or in some sense for most CR symbols, uh, they, they are not exhibited by homogeneous models, but um, nevertheless, homogeneous models do exist for, for, um, for many, many of these CR symbols. And so um, I want to outline how we obtain a homogeneous model from, um, from a CR symbol and uh, for, for this, let's, let's um, I, I'll note first that in our Heisenberg algebra, the G minus one component has this splitting with the bigrading that we've assigned previously. And that confers a bigrading on the, um, on the 
space of um, endomorphisms, the CSP space, conformal symplectically algebra on G minus one. Specifically, G minus one is split into three components. I've labeled with a pair of weights here, but the first weight is always zero. And the second weight, minus two, zero, and two, describes how these, um, how these, um, how these, the elements of this algebra um, act on the com graded components of the um, of the G minus one space here. So um, zero zero is going to preserve both components. Zero two is going to move the minus one minus one component to the minus one one component and send the minus one one component to zero and so forth. Um, I introduced this this splitting because. Um, we need to, for a given reduced modified symbol, I, I want to label um, a special subspace within it, which is going to be the subset of the, the reduced modified symbol um, belonging to the zero zero component of CSP, the, the degree zero derivations of the Heisenberg algebra in the, within this zero zero component. And um, here I've noted that it's a subspace of G00. What I mean by this is that our reduced modified symbol that we take always corresponds to a given CR symbol. And through this, with, with, with G00 reduced defined this way, uh, it will always belong to the 00, zero component of the associated CR symbol. And if we now suppose that G0 reduced is a subalgebra, of the space in which it naturally lives, which is what happens for a homogeneous model, for example. Uh, we can let G0 reduced be the Lie, Al Lie group, a Lie group with G0, the, with the reduced modified CR symbol as its Lie, Lie algebra, and let G00, capital G00, denote the group whose Lie algebra is, is the 00, zero component of this symbol. And these are going to play roles of, of ambient space and isotropy subgroup for a homogeneous model that we construct. So I'm, I'm, in a moment, I'll be quotienting the larger group by G00 to obtain a, a coset space. Now, uh, the, I want to note that, that uh, the Heisenberg algebra belongs to every reduced modified CR symbol. And in particular, this minus one one component belongs to the reduced modified CR symbols. So uh, the, we, can, we can label the left invariant distribution on the group G0 reduced whose, whose fiber at the identity coincides with the G minus one one component within the reduced modified symbol. And we'll label that left invariant distribution as this d hat flat with subscripts minus one one. And similarly, let's we label the left invariant distribution d zero two to be the distribution whose whose fiber at the identity matches this subspace of the reduced modified CR symbol. Uh, and so we have these two distributions defined. An important property of them is that they're invariant under the adjoint action of the G00 subgroup. So from, uh, um, so, so in other words, when we, um, when we um, ap apply the, the push forward at the natural quotient map, um, that takes us from the larger group to this left coset space defined here. When we apply the push forward of that map to either of these, these dij flat uh, distributions, they define, they produce a well-defined distribution on the left coset space, which I'm denoting here by g0 mod g0, zero, zero. And uh, we'll denote this, this um, distribution that is projected down, each of these distributions projected down using this D flat notation now without the hat. And if we consider now the direct sum of D flat minus one one and D flat zero two, this turns out to define a two non-degenerate hypersurface type CR structure on the, on the space um, that I'm denoting here, MZ zero, the in, in zero C 
which is this left coset space where we quotient the larger group by this isotropy subgroup. Now, I've just said it's a CR structure. It's rather non-standard to say that because this is, this is really more like the complexified CR structure we saw earlier. And to identify an appropriate real submanifold within it that plays the role of, of the actual CR manifold that we want to construct, uh, we take um, we take an appropriately chosen involution. There's some involution that I, I haven't included in these slides because it, it's more of a technical detail, but nevertheless, uh, we have this involution from the outset of this construction. And we define M0 uh, to be the fixed point set of this involution. And the pair M0 and the with the uh, complex distribution H flat defined on this real manifold M0 will be the homogeneous, will be a homogeneous CR manifold whose, um, whose associated bundle P0 admits a, a reduction with constant reduced modified symbol, D constant reduced modified symbol that we started with. So this is a way that we can take a reduced modified symbol that happens to be a Lie algebra and, and construct from a, a homogeneous model uh, with that reduced modified symbol. Um, so the, um, uh, so, so, so next I want to give some, some general results that are analogous to the parallelism we constructed for, um, for, um, for CR structures with a given modified symbol at a point. And so for this, uh, let's fix a reduced modified symbol and um, suppose that it has finite dimensional Tanaka prolongation defined just as we defined Tanaka prolongations for modified symbols. And for one of these structures, the um, uh, um, corresponding for, for a CR, sorry, for a two non-degenerate hypersurface type CR structure uh, for which the corresponding P0 bundle admits a, a reduction with, uh, with this given modified, reduced modified symbol that we've, um, that we've fix, fixed from the outset. There will exist a, a bundle, a large bundle over, over this reduced modified bundle of um, dimension equal to the universal Tanaka prolongation of this reduced modified symbol that admits a canonical absolute parallelism. So compared to the previous parallelism that I introduced, this one is defined on a smaller bundle. And um, so to one of these, for one of these structures, the dimension of its algebra of infinitesimal symmetries um, will again be bounded by the, the dimension of the universal prolongation, something that can be calculated purely algebraically if we have the reduced modified symbol. And um, furthermore, if, if the CR symbol is recoverable and uh, we're working with a flat structure, so flat structures are of the type that I, I just constructed a moment ago by taking a CR symbol and producing a, a, a homogeneous model. Um, if we are working with a flat structure that is that has a CR sim a recoverable CR sh symbol, then its algebra of then its algebra of infinitesimal symmetries um, will actually be isomorphic as an algebra to the real part of this universal Tanaka prolongation. And lastly, we have a uniqueness result for the maximally symmetric models. So if uh, a CR symbol is recoverable and any, um, um, then, then any CR structure with the constant reduced modified CR symbol that we fix from the outset of this theorem, whose algebra of infinitesimal symmetry uh, attains the, the upper bound for its dimension, um, any such CR structure will be locally equivalent to the flat CR structure with that same symbol. Okay, so there's local uniqueness for the maximally symmetric models. And so I'll conclude today by giving an example of one of these models. I want to just quickly translate the, um, 
the language I used to describe these from some uh, general uh, theoretic description to a more coordinate dependent description. If we consider now a five dimensional Heisenberg algebra with basis vectors E0 through E4 and um, uh, let its structure equations be given by these, uh, this, these, these equations here. Um, then the, I'm going to label the minus one, minus one components as span of E2 and let E3 and E4 span minus one, one. The reduced modified symbol I want to construct now will consist of that Heisenberg algebra to, together with some subspace within the conformal symplectic Lie algebra or derivations of the Heisenberg algebra. And it will be spanned as operators acting on the G minus one space represented by these matrices here together with a four by four identity matrix. So altogether this describes an eight, eight dimensional vector space for um, Lie algebra, it's even a Lie algebra. And from this, the construction of a homogeneous model I described a moment ago will yield a homogeneous um, CR structure of dimension seven. Furthermore, the, the CR structure is going to um, be um, uh, seven set, uh, rather the CR structure symbol is going to be non-regular is what I want to say. Now the structure equations on the Heisenberg algebra correspond with this chosen basis correspond to a matrix representation of the reduced Levy form that I denote by HL here. And I've coded in color on this slide, a, a matrix in the, up, the two by two matrix in the upper right of I'll denote by C, this is the uh, matrix representation of the anti-linear operator ad V. Um, there's only one of these up to rescaling because this model has a rank one Levy kernel. And then on the left, there's some other matrix omega, which um, speaking very informally encodes some local invariants uh, that are not seen by the CR symbol, um, but uh, they are seen by the reduced modified CR symbol. And from these three ingredients, HL, C, and omega, we can define the CR some reduced modified CR symbol, which in turn defines the maximal homogeneous model of that type. And um, so I want to conclude um, now with a, a classification of the um, seven dimensional homogeneous CR manifolds of um, whose symmetry groups attain the upper bound for their associated reduced modified CR symbol. So in the, the notation that I, I just very, very quickly introduced translating um, local invariants into these matrix representations, we have the pair, the triple H, HL, C, and omega. Each triple determines a reduced modified CR symbol that corresponds to a, a homogeneous, a different homogeneous CR manifold. And um, each, so each row of this table corresponds to a different homogeneous CR manifold, except the fifth row has some parameters, eta and epsilon that take settings and epsilon can be minus one and one and eta can be zero or one. So the fifth row of this table actually corresponds to four distinct CR manifolds due to these different parameter settings. So altogether, I have this table um, corresponds to nine distinct homogeneous seven dimensional um, CR manifolds and their symmetry groups are, are given in this right column. So the, the, the full example I gave on the last slide is in this first row. Its symmetry group has dimension eight. The maximally symmetric model is in the very bottom row. Its symmetry group has dimension 16. The seven dimensional Future light cone appears in this fifth row with eta equal to one and epsilon equal to one. That's, I mentioned that because it's, it's one of the more well-known CR, homogeneous CR manifolds. And um, so, so I, this, I said I'd conclude the slides here, but the final thing that I'll mention is that we have a 16 dimensional uh, CR manifold, that's the maximally symmetric one. In fact, for rank K equal to one, we know the upper bound for the dimension, a sharp upper bound for the dimension of the symmetry group for, for, um, for all dimensions, arbitrary dimensions. And um, the, the models of these maximally symmetric ones were found um, in the, the previously mentioned paper by Porter and Zelenko. And so here's 
an explicit hypersurface realization of these maximally symmetric models um, that they found. So um, I, I'll conclude the talk here. And, and on this page is the reference slide slides um, that, from, that I've referred to throughout the talk. So, so thank you, everyone, for, for your attention.